The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Would everyone please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would alert, I'm uh, Dr. Peter Scare, President of Allen County Life, Right to Life, and I welcome all of you uh, on this uh, uh, difficult day weather-wise, but a glorious day for life. And if you look at the screen right there, you'll see the number 41,667. That number represents the number of children who have been aborted approximately since January 1st. Uh, there are more um, children aborted every day than there are seats in this theater. If um, you would like to get another perspective on this, you are invited to come to Concordia Theological Seminary off of Clinton. And our students have put up 2,700 crosses. They're handmade, hand-painted, blue and pink, and it's visually quite stunning. And I invite you to come to the seminary, walk among the crosses, and think about um, the Holocaust, the ongoing Holocaust, but also the cross of Christ uh, in which we find redemption and forgiveness. At this time, it's our uh, pleasure. I'd like to welcome two sets of people especially. First, um, doctors, nurses, everybody who's in the healthcare, uh, pharmacists, anybody who's in the healthcare profession, I would invite you to stand now that we may uh, recognize you and give thanks to, to, to you and for you. Note that includes uh, our main uh, speaker today, so you'll be delighted uh, to hear him. And also at this time, all of those who, um, the churches have to be active in this, and I'm proud of uh, all the clergy, the pastors, the seminarians, uh, those who uh, lead our churches for the sake of life, and your presence here means an awful lot to us as shepherds. So please, all pastors and ministers and those studying for that profession, please rise that we may acknowledge you. Now, if you would, you may join me, you would join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for the gift of life that you have fearfully and wonderfully made each of us, that you have created us body and soul and given to us eyes, ears, and all our members, our reason, and all our senses. Even as through your eternal Son you fashioned Adam from the dust of the earth and you breathed into him the breath of life, from Adam's side you formed Eve, male and female, you created us. And from that blessed union you continue to bring children into the world. As grandchildren of Adam and Eve, we thank you for the blessed gift of marriage and for children who are the fruit of that union. But as we celebrate life, so also do we come to you in deep repentance. For like Adam and Eve, we have listened to Satan, the father of all lies. Like Cain, we have shed the blood of the innocent. 
As a people, we have too often prioritized money and career, power, pleasure, and reputation. In a selfish pursuit of our own happiness, we have turned liberty into license. We have thought of children as obstacles to our plans and goals. We have been silent when we should have spoken, and we have been timid when our children needed us to be courageous. Knowing that there is no freedom apart from the truth, restore to our land true marriage, the truth of male and female. Give to our children fathers who will be strong men and guardians. Give them mothers who nurture and care. Restore our broken families as places where children may flourish. This year especially we mourn the 2,411 children whose bodies were found in the garage and car trunk of local abortionist Dr. Ulrich Klopfer, even as we recognize the even greater number of children who are aborted in our land every single day. Thank you for all who are present, for all who are willing to take a stand. Knowing that the fight is fierce, make firm our resolve. Strengthen our legs to march, our arms to defend, our voices to speak on behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves. Knowing that our lives have been redeemed by your son's death and resurrection, give us courage to live as ones whose lives are eternal, remembering the judgment to come, but also remembering the cross of Christ in which we take refuge. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now it is my uh, distinct pleasure and uh, privilege to welcome to the stage our third district congressman and a true hero for life. So welcome with me, Congressman Jim Banks. Congressman Banks, before you start your remarks, I would like to present to you um, the sweatshirt that will be worn by our life defenders at the National March for Life next week. And in recognition of your faithful support over many years, we make you an honorary member of the Life Defenders Delegation. Thank you. I think it fits. That would have been embarrassing if I would have put it on and it didn't fit. Hello, Northeast Indiana. Are you excited today to make a stand and march for life? Each and every year is an honor for me to come here today and be surrounded by so many of our region's greatest pro-life champions, like the one and only Kathy Humbarger. Isn't she great? As I said on the House floor this week, none of the progress that we've made over the last 47 years would be possible without the steadfast support of organizations like Allen County Right to Life and pro-life champions like Kathy Humbarger and the members of the, of the board of Allen County Right to Life, so many of you who've made that progress possible. Let's say thank you to the leadership of this group that made today and everything else possible. Thank you for all that you do. Each year we gather in this place to send a clear message. Hoosiers will never back down in defense of the fundamental right to life. The agenda of Speaker Pelosi and House Democrats has proven to be the most partisan attack on our nation's values that we have ever seen. I remain firmly committed to fighting for unborn Hoosiers past and present, and under President Trump's fearless leadership, this radical agenda continues to be no match for the cause of life. This Congress, I'm proud to do my part in co-sponsoring over 20 pro-life bills in this Congress alone, including legislation to defund Planned Parenthood, legislation to prohibit abortions after 20 weeks, and 
and ban abortions based on Down syndrome. Additionally, I've joined over 200 of my colleagues, including my good friend, Dr. Phil Rowe, who we're gonna hear from in a little bit, in filing an amicus brief with the U.S. Supreme Court in support of Louisiana's law requiring physicians to have hospital admitting privileges if they are performing abortions, just like we have done for so many years here in Allen County. But arguably the most important legislative effort that Dr. Rowe and I have been a part of and have championed thus far in this Congress is the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. This should never be a controversial issue. Babies born alive after botched abortions should deserve and always receive life-saving medical care. Yeah. When I got to Congress, I never thought such a thing could become a partisan issue. Dr. Rowe and I, though, have joined over 80 of our colleagues in calling for unanimous consent on the House floor to bring this legislation up for a vote and sign the discharge position to force a vote on this legislation. And although Speaker Pelosi has blocked us countless times, including turning off my microphone when I went to the floor as your representative to call for a vote on this piece of legislation, we will not stop fighting until we end infanticide. I don't have to tell all of you we have an important election on the horizon. And let me tell you, um, to deviate from my notes for a moment, because I feel like it's important to say, I am so proud to stand with President Trump, who is the most pro-life president that we have ever had, and I can't wait to see him have another four years to make it. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the honor and privilege of introducing an extraordinary ally in the fight to protect the sanctity of life. An honorable and revered member of the House who I am lucky to call a mentor and a friend, Dr. Phil Rowe. Many of you heard Dr. Rowe, he's no stranger to Northeast Indiana. He spoke to a group of Allen County Right to Life uh, champions way back in the August recess. And it was after that that Kathy Humbarger said, can we get him to come back again and speak to us at the March for Life? And I'm so thrilled that he uh, took us up on that invitation. Dr. Rowe is, a, is the definition of a servant leader. He selfless, selflessly put on the uniform as a Vietnam era veteran, uh, serving our country as a major in the Army Medical Corps. He also served as mayor of Johnson City, Tennessee, You'll have to forgive the accent in a few moments. He spent 30 years practicing as an OBGYN and is now retiring from Congress after representing the people of East Tennessee for over a decade, where he served our nation's veterans as both chairman and ranking member of the House Veterans Affairs Committee, which I'm so proud to serve alongside him as a part of that committee. Dr. Rowe has been a tireless advocate of our nation's heroes and for the cause for life throughout his career. His leadership will be sorely missed as he moves on to the next chapter of his life. Thank you to all of you for being here today. God bless you as you continue to stand together and fight for the, fight for the right to life. Now please help me give a warm Hoosier welcome to Dr. Phil Rowe. Congressman Rowe, when most doctors are retiring to live the good life, you were just getting started. In recognition of your years of service in the U.S. House of Representatives 
and also in honor of the over 5,000 babies that you delivered, we also make you an honorary member of the Life Defenders delegation. Thank you. Thanks, all very much. You know, when uh, I was up here with Jim uh, several months ago, and uh, Kathy invited me back, I, I misunderstood her. I thought she said it was Fort Myers where we were having this, uh, and I thought the weather was going to be a lot better than it is. Uh, but I, I cannot thank you all enough for coming out on a day like today when the weather is not the best and supporting life. Um, and, and Jim, I want to say a couple of words about Jim Banks. Um, you know, I, I appreciate, Jim, I can't tell you how much I appreciate being invited. Congress only has a 10% approval rating. I'm glad to get invited home. Even. So, uh, I told the leader the other day, I said, actually, are three things that poll worse than Congress. And he said, Phil, what in the world could that be? So, well, it's Lindsay Lohan, meth labs in North Korea. And I'm not, I'm not so sure about North Korea anymore. So. Uh, all kidding aside, it, it, the reason, one of the reasons that I am here, uh, besides having the opportunity to advocate for life, uh, is Jim Banks. Uh, you guys could not have elected a better member of Congress. Um, I have learned so much from him, and I chaired the, the uh, Veterans Affairs Committee in, in the last Congress. We got landmark legislation passed to help our nation's heroes who haven't always been treated so well, especially Vietnam era guys like myself. And Jim was right there. He also stepped up, and um, I, you know, I serve on a, on a, a couple of uh, committees, education, which we also serve on together. Um, I asked him to step up and take leadership in a technology subcommittee, something he can't come home and run on. You'll never know he did it. But it's incredibly important for our VA to get their electronic health record, record system right. And that's the man right there that I stepped up and asked to support it. And he said, absolutely, to serve. And I, I can't thank him enough. And I can't thank you enough for supporting this very, very honorable uh, gentleman. I want to tell you a little bit about myself, and then we'll get into why I'm here. Uh, I grew up on a farm in, in uh, Tennessee, and, and it was one hot summer day uh, in August. And I was cutting tobacco. And that convinced me organic chemistry wasn't that hard. And that's, uh, uh, you're in a tobacco patch, uh, everything looks better than that does. Um, so that's how I grew up and um, went to college, medical school. And, and like many of you, I looked at the vintage of the crowd. I saw you coming in. Uh, many of you are about, uh, in about my shape. And, um, and I, I volunteered for the military. I volunteered to go to the mailbox. And I got drafted like a lot of young men my age did. And I served my country and came to East Tennessee to raise a family and just practice medicine. And the group I selected were some of the greatest people I've ever met, all pro-life, never one time. As a matter of fact, when we interviewed anybody for our practice, and it's grown dramatically. Uh, in, the, in the 31 years I practiced medicine there, we delivered over 25,000 patients. And I'm, I, that's been... I'll tell you the joy of what I do and the importance of what you're doing. Yesterday, I'm walking through, I fought anonymously through the uh, Washington, D.C. airport. And someone said, Dr. Rowe. And I stopped and looked around. This young man, I didn't know him. He said, 35 years ago, you delivered me. And he said, he said, I'm a commander in the Navy now. I have two children. And my family, my father, my grandfather, and I, I hate to bring this up. I know this is a touchy subject got to go to the bowl game with Indiana and UT. Uh, in, a, in a crowd like this, I get where I am, I want to get out alive. Uh, but here this, here this young man was. I thought about him on the way up here, because I'm a grandfather, and many grandparents here. It's one of the reasons I'm retiring from Congress. Usually when somebody retires from Congress, they've done a poll, and they're 20 points behind, they want to go home and be with their family. They're going to get to go home and be with their family anyway. The voters are going to send them there. But I really do want to do that. And I thought about that grandfather. He said, I don't think my grandfather is going to be able to go to another one. But it was more important for his grandfather to see his grandson be successful in life. Think about that, grandparents out there. How proud I see a child right over here. And how proud we are of our children and grandchildren. They are our future. 
They're what it's all about. And I thought about that young man. If, if someone had made a, quote, choice. Look, God knows us from the, before we have our first heartbeat. It says so in the Bible, and I believe that. That God knows us in, when we're in our mother's womb. I absolutely believe that. I am a, uh, what we call in the South, a deep water Methodist. Um, that's different. I was baptized in the Cumberland Creek and the Woodlawn Methodist Church is supposed to be in Sprinkled. That's a deep water Methodist. And I was, I was raised um, basically to, uh, to be respectful and to adhere life. I cannot imagine any other way. I'm going to go into some technical things in a minute uh, about life. Uh, one of the things I think that has helped me the most in, in my life, explain it to patients, is the ultrasound machine. I'll, I'll share with you, and I think the good Lord will forgive me for this, but I would have, say, a young woman come to the office, and she would say, um, Dr. Rowe, I'm pregnant, and I'm thinking about having an abortion. Well, I would say, let's go examine you, and let's see what's going on. And I would examine this young woman, and, and um, I would know uh, within a week or so how far pregnant. Uh, but I would say, you know, I'm not really sure how far pregnant you are. So why don't we do an ultrasound just to be sure everything's going along okay? So we go back to the ultrasound room, and I would take a lot of time with this ultrasound to be sure that she saw the heartbeat. And then I would go back to the office and I'd say, well, why don't you wait and think about this over the weekend and then maybe you can call me back if you want to discuss it more. And I would forget about it. And two or three or four months later, I'd see this same young woman walking down the hall. Her abdomen's beginning to protrude a little bit with a smile on her face and she had made a decision to have her baby. I have seen that over and over and over again with young women who made that decision. Now think about that 30 or 35 years later, that these are the productive people in our society. They're protecting us. There are nurses, there are doctors, there are mechanics, there are firemen, there are police officers. That's who's taking care of us that we've been aborting. And this, this number is, is just astounding to me. We're halfway through the month of January with this number right here, bigger than all the two cities in my congressional district of people we have lost. I want to tell you a little bit about a couple of little babies that I delivered. One, um, I remember I went to Walmart, and I was going to Walmart with my son and um, to get something. And we see this little two-year-old, and he's knocking everything off the bottom shelf. And, I mean, he's taking, he's got a pair of glasses on. I've had glasses since I was 10 years old, and I figured out I couldn't see anything in school. Um, so he's knocking everything down, and I stop and I see his mother. Of course, I recognize his mother. I won't tell you what the baby's now. I'll say Baby Smith. Well, Baby Smith, and this was almost 30 years ago, weighed one pound, four ounces. And Baby Smith got to 14 ounces in size. And all I saw that day was a happy two-year-old knocking everything off the bottom shelf he could reach. And that young man now is a productive citizen in Northeast Tennessee with his own family. Think about that. I have seen that happen over and over. We have a colleague, Jim, in Congress, I won't mention his name either, who just had a grandchild that weighed one pound, five ounces, something that these people in these abortion bills would toss over as meaningless tissue. That baby now, I said, I said to Congressman, how much is your grandbaby? How much is Moose weigh now? He weighs nine pounds and he's home with his mother and he's going to be a normal baby. When I started practice in 1977 in Johnson City, Tennessee, if you were 32 weeks gestation, and you delivered your baby prematurely, half of those babies didn't make it, they died. Today, it's no different than a term birth. That's how much better we've gotten and our technology's gotten. Jim brought up something a minute ago. We have a saying in Northeast Tennessee, it matters who governs. Well, let me tell you, it does matter who governs because we're in a cultural war right now. And I know my first term in Congress, I was down the House floor for, with uh, Chris Smith, who's from New Jersey. And I talked to Chris on the phone yesterday. He said, for over 30 years, that man has been a tireless advocate for life in Washington, D.C., I feel like he felt like he was swimming against the current. He asked me to come and speak as in 2009. I was, I was a you know very old freshman, but I was a freshman. So I gave I down the house floor and spoke. And these folks came by my office and said, you were really, uh, you did a really nice job. Could you speak to our group tomorrow? 
And I'm thinking it's going to be 50 or so people, you know, at the Capitol steps. I said, oh, sure, I'll be glad to be there. So I walked out the next day, and there's 200,000 people there at the Right to Life March, which you guys are going to go, I said, boy, it flew me once, but not again. I was, you know, I was stage struck, and I looked at it with people as far as I could see. It doesn't matter. I cannot thank you guys enough how much your support means to us when we're fighting the likes of the Pelosi's and so forth. Let me tell you how bad it is. How absolutely bad. What Jim just said, the discharge petition is where we, we, the speaker won't bring something up. And all this bill says is, is that if you botch an abortion and a baby, that is a baby, is born alive, that you give it care that you would do that I would do to anybody. We would stop at a roadside, anywhere if you had a wreck, whatever. That seemed to me so obvious that I couldn't understand why anybody. She will not bring it up. All 200 Republicans have signed that discharge petition. Three Democrats have signed that discharge petition. And I, I applaud them for doing that, to go against the wind that they're going against. But think about that. That's 232 people. Do not listen to what these people say. Watch what they do. Because you can sign that. You said, I am for life. And these people say, oh, I, I, I'm for life. I'm for this. When you don't sign that, and I stood, and I think Jim was there also, shoulder to shoulder with three women at a press conference. And I've met one of them who spoke in my district a year ago who survived a third trimester abortion. Let me tell you, you want something moving? Stand next to someone who has survived an abortion that someone tried to kill them. And I don't know how they've dealt with it and with all of them. I'm sure the, the questions they've had in their life. But that was a very moving time for me to be next to these brave women. And I think we've got to keep up what you're doing. I'm so excited. And by the way, at the cynic I've become, I used to be not cynical. But next week, guess what? The Right to Life March is in Washington, D.C. And guess what? Congress is not in session. So there won't be as many of us as there normally is. They usually have to limit how many of us come because so many show up. But you will show up. I applaud you for showing up. And thank you for showing up. I want to tell you something we do every week. We have a Republican Study Committee and we have a Values Action Team on the Republican Study Committee. And each week, we have uh, Vicki Hartzler from Missouri who chairs that. I'm on the Values Action Team. We keep an eye on every piece of legislation that may have something to do with life in it. And it comes out, you guys can get a copy of it. I would encourage you to do it. I want to read to you a sentence right here and, and to echo what, uh, what Jim said about President Trump. He reversed the Mexico City policy, which means that you no longer can use your tax dollars in a foreign country to perform abortions. Every time a Democrat comes in, and by the way, I can say anything I want to because I'm not running again, so it's not a problem for me. I don't, I don't care what they, I'm in a relaxed, the relaxed caucus, so I can say whatever, and they can say we're going to beat you, fine. You're not going to beat me, I'm not running. So anyway, I want to read this letter to you, and it's a little part of it. Pro-life victory. The president stands and he to, it sends a veto letter to Pelosi. On January 18, 2019, President Trump sent a letter to Speaker Pelosi promising to veto any legislation that weakens federal pro-life protections. The letter reads in part, I am concerned that this year the Congress may consider legislation that could substantially change federal policies and laws on abortion and allow taxpayer dollars to be used for the destruction of human life, end quotes. The letter concludes with the following. I believe it is the most basic duty of government to guard the innocent. With that in mind, I will veto any legislation that weakens current pro-life federal policies and laws or encourage the, the destruction of innocent human life at any stage. Thank you, President. <laughs> Word whispered in my ear yesterday via the cell phone, and I can't actually say it, but look out on the 22nd. I'm giving you guys an advance notice. On the 22nd of January, there's going to be another announcement uh, from the administration uh, that will be coming out from Health and Human Services that will also protect life. 
I've done this job now this year, this, this December, I would have gotten my medical degree 50 years ago. Um, I watched uh, a, a basically miracles happen. My first pediatric in-hospital rotation was St. Jude's Children's Hospital. When the Lord walks on the earth again, it will be at St. Jude's. I can tell you, they are doing God's work there. Eighty percent of those babies died when I was in, in school down there. Eighty percent live today. Eighty percent. Wow. Look at all we've done to save a child's life. I can't think of anything more scary. I've seen it over and over in my practice where a mother would call me, what do I do, my baby is sick, to save those children. And yet what you're doing to help change a mind and life saves the same life. We have incredibly exciting things on the horizon medically. And I spoke to a physician here just a moment ago, uh, Dr. Francis Collins is the head of the NIH. I think back to medical school with Dr. Lemuel Diggs, who was my hematology professor. Dr. Diggs spent his entire career, his entire medical career, trying to cure sickle cell anemia for African Americans in this country. I have sat by the bedside of those patients and done exchange transfusions where we take the sickle blood out and put normal hemoglobin blood in, hemoglobin A blood in, so that they could survive their pregnancy and birth. With the new technology today that's going on at NIH, it looks like we can take a piece of HIV virus that can kill you, an attenuated virus it's called, hook the right code to it, send a message to your DNA, and cure sickle cell disease. That's what's on the horizon. That's an unbelievable. Now we have, a, we have an incredible opportunity in this country to get something right. Something is going on right in front of our nose that's extremely important but rarely noticed. President Trump has now placed one out of four federal judges in three years. One more judge on the Supreme Court and the right case gets there. I believe Roe versus Wade and why anybody, pick, nobody is named Roe by the way. I, I, that's, uh, why they pick my name, I, I mean, they could have picked some other Smith, Jones, we pick on them all the time. Like, nobody's named Roe. Um, so anyway, the, 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 we get one more Supreme Court justice. I absolutely believe that's going to be remanded to the states. And let me tell you what I think about this. First of all, I think nobody should. But the Tenth Amendment says in the Constitution, rights not spelled out specifically in the Constitution, you as an individual or the federal government is left to the state. I think the states are going to finally make those decisions if we get the right case. And I believe it's coming. I think we're changing hearts. And I will tell you one of the things you all are doing, I've looked outside of the displays that are out there. You're providing support for these young women who, who may be in a tough spot in their life. We do that at home. We can't support them enough because you're not supporting one person. You're supporting an entire family and a generation when you're doing that. And I want to thank you for that. And in, in closing, I want to just say a few things that you all you all have our backs in Washington because when we go, when the secular world is there, I know God is there. And I know you are there supporting us, whether you're in Indiana or Tennessee. I cannot thank you enough for that. And I want to finish uh, saying something to you all as I leave. And everyone in this room, I know everyone in here, all of us, love God. I know that all of us love our families. I see many families here. I know that all of us love life. And I know that all of us love this great country. I know that I do. It's provided me and my family so much. So thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do. And may God bring his rich blessings on you. Thank you. alcoholism, 
and an abusive relationship that I found myself at Clopper's Clinic on Webster Street. Not once, but twice did I enter that building. However, at the time, I didn't realize that what I was carrying was a baby. It was a crisis. I was part of a vast crowd that dehumanizes the unborn. Living with a man that was so cruel as to beat his dog, I knew I could never bear his children. At the time, my thinking was so muddy that I did not comprehend the fact that I should simply escape and that I also deserved better treatment. On top of that, I was so mired in my addictions, I was unable to stop. I did not understand what I was truly doing that day when I walked through that door and went up those stairs on Webster Street in January and September of 1998. Details of both of those visits are seared into my mind and will remain with me for the rest of my life. I foolishly believed that once I walked out of that clinic that it would just go away. What I didn't realize is I was simply trading live children for the burden of having taken their lives at my very own hands. By the grace of God, I escaped my life after 11 long years of enduring my self-imposed prison. God began the process of drawing me in and opening my eyes to his grace. I was freed from my addictions and blessed with a husband that was actually nice to me, which was quite a novelty. Every January and September, I would think about those abortions, but never did begin to fully comprehend what I had done until I had a miscarriage in 2008. When I saw the fully formed baby at 11 weeks, a terrible realization hit me. I, it was absolutely impossible that those babies were nothing but blobs, as I had been led to believe, at 9 weeks and 15 weeks. I was shaken to the core as I looked at this little person entirely intact. I stared long and hard into the wide open eyes of my baby and knew what I had done. I then realized, looking back, that I desperately had wanted to cling to the untruth that I was fed about my pregnancy tissue. Contrary to what the abortion workers would have me believe, they were people, and I, in my fear, confusion, addictions, and lack of direction, had taken their lives. How often does this happen? I believe much more than the industry would have you believe, deep pain and regret often comes when the realization of the truth hits. It can take years for that to happen. How many women, even this very day, are realizing what they have done? After a radical transformation, when I encountered Jesus in 2010, I became a happily married, born-again Christian, growing in my faith and healing from my past. It was not until September of 2019 that God would bring the secret of my abortions into the limelight for his greater purpose. I work at a library, and the movie Unplanned showed up on my shelf. I was drawn to it, but I refused to watch it. And then on September 9th, 2019, a friend of mine on Facebook posted how she had watched it, and she raved about it. I was filled with an overwhelming desire to watch this movie, and I downloaded it immediately on Hoopla. I was shaken to the core. Something in my mind shifted, and something was planted in me, a new desire to join the fight against abortion. I looked up Abby Johnson's ministry, but didn't find a place for myself. I liked her page on Facebook, though, which caused local groups like Allen County Right to Life to pop up in my Facebook feed. Five days later, George Klopfer's face was in the news. I was horrified as I saw the news of the findings and immediately wondered if mine was among those found. You see, there were some weird things that happened in the clinic on my second time around, and I had always wondered what was behind his strange behavior that day. I was completely traumatized and in shock, and I had to talk to someone, but I had no idea who, and Allen County Right to Life came to mind. I called them, and Kathy Humbarger herself answered the phone. With love and compassion, she spoke to me for a few minutes. She asked if I could call her back on her cell phone. She had just kind of popped into the office to grab a file. She was never over on that end of the building, but she had heard the phone ringing and knew she had to answer it and I knew then that God had led me to her. I immediately saw that I had been led there. God had prepared me for the Clopper story and sent Kathy to set me on my feet after being knocked over by such a blow. 
What has ensued from that point forward has been quite the awakening as to what pro-life truly means. There's so much more than I ever thought. God is at work here, and what you are doing does make a difference. As someone that has joined you in the fight from the other side of the fence, I'm here to tell you that your efforts are not in vain. You are making a difference. Through you, I have learned what the truth of abortion is, and I now have a voice to join you. I'm eternally grateful to God for leading me here to join you in this work, and I thank you for wel welcoming me with open arms. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Thank you. A wonderful thanks to Kelly for sharing her testimony with us. At this point, we get to the part of the rally that I have been waiting for for months. We are officially launching Right to Life of Northeast Indiana right now. Since 1976, Allen County Right to Life has been committed to protecting the sanctity of innocent human life from conception to natural death. Now expanding to cover seven counties, we are making a regional shift. We are dedicated to building a stronger culture of life in the greater Northeast Indiana region. We're moving forward in love to educate, advocate, encourage, and defend all human life. We believe in protecting the right to life of all innocent human beings, that change happens when love and compassion come first, and that being pro-life is a choice, a choice to educate yourself and be informed, a choice to love and support all, regardless of our differences, a choice to take on tough conversations with love and compassion, a choice to make your voice count in support of pro-life legislation. You can help build a stronger culture of life in Northeast Indiana by intentionally choosing to be pro-life. Making the choice to stand for life means showing up. It means stepping out of your comfort zone to take action. Action in prayer and peaceful protesting. Action in clear communication, from being educated to helping educate others. Action in sharing your voice, voting pro-life, and using your platform for good. Together, we can move mountains. Together, we can defend those who can't defend themselves in Northeast Indiana. What do you choose? We rely heavily on social media for getting our messages out to our youth today. So as you know, Planned Parenthood is targeting the sort of people who are on Instagram, who are on Twitter, who are on things like TikTok that I don't even know what that does or is, but they're on it. So if you are on those platforms, please use our handle, tag us in your pictures from today, like our pages, follow us, but not in a stalker way, and <laughs> and share what we put on social media. Our social media director, Allison, does a fantastic job of posting things all the time that are wonderful to put on your pages. So please do that and help us spread the word to those people who Planned Parenthood is targeting. I want to also explain to you a little bit about our new logo. We've been working very closely with JH Specialty um, for months now to come up with a new logo that really represents who we are, especially in our expansion. So you can see our new banner here, and we have a great huge banner that's 16 feet long that will be in front of our march today. But um, the heart and the check mark. So the heart, I think, most of us would probably get right off the bat. And I'm going to try to do this without crying. We are a movement of love, right? 
Everybody here is here today because you love people other than yourselves. You care about people who are unborn. You care about people who are at their end of their lives and maybe being threatened with things like physician-assisted suicide or euthanasia or organ harvesting. You believe that all life is precious, and that is a belief based in love. It's because we love that we cannot allow abortion to be legal. It's because we love that we can't allow abortion to be even thinkable in the US or anywhere else in the world. Love is the foundation of what we do and how we act. And it's not a flimsy, self-serving love. It's the one that sacrifices and gives of itself. And for that, I'm really thankful to you guys. So then the check mark. What about the check mark? Well, the easiest thing to say about the check mark is that we're right. We, we're on the side of truth. <laughs> we have science on our side. Science was created by God, and you would imagine, as such, it lines up with what he tells us in the Bible as well. So all of logic, all of science, God's tools for us to learn more about him, attest to the value and equality of all human beings. Also part of that truth is that when we treat other people inhumanely, we make ourselves inhuman. Why would we want to allow anybody to do that to themselves? And so we reach out to people in the abortion industry. We reach out to people who are post-abortive, in love, to try to bring them out of that despair, out of those dark places, into a place of light, standing in the truth. But that check is also an action. We are hoping and expanding that more people in our seven counties will check the box to volunteer, will check the box to vote, We'll check the box to give. We'll decide that now is the time for action. To be personally pro-life anymore isn't good enough. If you're pro-life personally, you need to share that with our society because our, our nation is struggling and suffering and is injured, and we need to be part of the rescue. I'm hoping that all of you here today, but also everyone who couldn't make it because of freezing rain, is going to partner with us in that. If you did brave the weather today and are from Steuben, LaGrange, Noble, DeKalb, Adams, or Wells County, could you please stand up? and I hope to see a whole lot more of you in the future. At this juncture, then, I will hand the stage over to our board member, Adam Mildred, who's going to make some more introductions. Some of those introductions, again, are from our new counties. Adam? Good afternoon. Thank you, Tony. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I mean, come on, you came out in this weather to be with us. You got it. Thank you. All right. Um, as Abby said, my name is Adam Mildred, and on behalf of the board, and forgive me because I, with this unveiling, I got to change it now. Uh, on of Right to Life of Northeast Indiana, we want to thank you for joining us today for the 46th annual rally and march for life. Uh, we are uh, quite thankful for the partnership that we have here with St. Francis, uh, and uh, there are many volunteers that are out there, including some of the officers 
that are going to be uh, helping guard us as we are uh, driving or as we are walking through the city today. While we're here on the most sober of causes, we rejoice in the continued strength and commitment we see in you year after year since that terrible decision came down January 22nd, 1973. And we pray for the day that this march is just to remember the lost life, to promote healing, and to celebrate that justice for innocent life has returned to our land. But until then, we march. Um, as as uh, Abby just talked to you about, with all these seven counties, I'd like for you to consider that in 2017, the combined population of Adams, Allen, DeKalb, Huntington, Noble, Steuben, and Wells County was just over 597,000. That is, if you took every man, woman, and child in Northeast Indiana, you would need to multiply that, you would need to multiply that number by over a hundred times to even approach the 61 million lives that have been lost since Roe v. Wade. And if you let that sink all the way down to the bottom, you came here to join voices because you're here to say enough is enough, to be better equipped for the work ahead and to return and lead your communities. Hearts and minds are being won because of your loving expression, as Abby said, with the heart of this just cause. You are the ones to speak out and raise up young leaders that are making their trip to D.C. here soon. They know that it is a child, not a choice. Joining you today are many of our political leaders in Northeast Indiana that we will recognize at this time. And as I call out their names, I ask them to remain standing and we will applaud them all at once. Uh, first, um, in uh, representing uh, Senator Todd Young is Indiana Senator Justin Bush. We have uh, Congressional Representative Jim Banks, and you also heard from uh, Dr. Rowe, also a member of Cong Congress. From the State Senate, District 14, S Senator Dennis Cruz. We have uh, Senator Justin Bush from District 16, and he's also running uh, for re-election. We also then have uh, Representative Martin Carbaugh from District 81. Representative Dave Abbott from District 82, who you heard from the pledge. Representative Chris Judy from District 83. And Representative Dave Heine from District 85. Now, these representatives, just as a side note, they're up for re-election. Uh, and, and we're mindful of that. And we're so thankful for their support. And I also would be remiss not to mention some of the other representatives and leaders who have extended their regrets but would be here and also vote with us. And that would be Senator uh, Liz Brown from District uh, 15, Senator Andy Zay from, Sen from District 17, Travis Holdman from 19, and then also the representatives, Denny Zent uh, from 51, which is up Steuben County Way, uh, Ben Schmalz and Matt Lehman, and also Bob Morris. Those folks can be counted on to vote with us uh, at the State House, and we're very, very thankful for them. I would also note uh, our treasurer uh, and up for re-election, William Royce. We have uh, Commissioner Nelson Peters from District 1, who's also running for re-election. And by the way, he's the guy that ended up leading the charge in the whole patient safety ordinance thing a while back, right? So he is a, also a big favorite of the, of the board, and we are so thankful for his work. We also have representatives Joel Benz uh, from the county council. We have Kyle Curley, uh, who is an at-large, who is up for re-election. We also have Sarah Gnagny, who is from St. Joe Township uh, trustee. We also have uh, a couple of mayors. First of all, newly elected mayor Steve McMichael from New Haven. We also have Auburn Mayor Mike Lay. Uh, and uh, although I didn't see him, uh, but is perennially here and supporting Joseph Kelsey, for the mayor of Woodburn. We have the city clerk, Lana Kiesling. We also have uh, 
City Council Districts from Fort Wayne, Rush Yale District 2, and Thomas Didier District 3. And although he was unable to join us, uh, Jason Arp and Tom Freistoffer, who are also regularly supportive. We have from the City Town Council from Huntertown, Brandon Seifert. We also have from the City Town Council of Leo Cedarville, uh, John Eastis. We also have Fort Wayne uh, Community Schools District 2, a school board at large, Glenna Yale. And then also Southwest Allen County School District, District 1, Tom Rhodes, who is also a candidate uh, for Indiana seat, uh, Senate uh, District 16. Teresa Green, who is a candidate for the Whitley County Commissioner. I also saw Mitch Harper, former state representative and city of Fort Wayne uh, council member. And then finally, I have to say, with a small apology for the dinner, he was here for the dinner. Pat Miller just couldn't read my writing. And that was uh, Mr. Joel Nagel, uh, N-A-G-E-L, um, who is candidate for coroner, and he's already accepted my apologies previously. But thank you all for standing with us and standing for life. Now, after His Excellency, the Most Reverend Kevin Rhodes, Bishop of the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese, returns thanks and seeks blessings on our march here in just a few moments. Catherine Burt will lead us in singing God Bless America as you exit the auditorium. During the march, Deputy Fort Wayne Police Department Deputy Chief uh, Marty Bender, who's also a former city councilman, and officers will be escorting us. Leading the way, as they faithfully do every year, will be the Knights of Columbus. Uh, the Right to Life banner will be carried by Concordia Lutheran High School, and then will be followed uh, by a group uh, that you heard uh, from uh, called Silent No More. We will walk uh, through the city uh, and end up at the Federal Building, and uh, we do so reverently, um, and we so appreciate uh, you being here and marching with us. We will see you again next year, Lord willing, in January 2021. Bring a friend, bring your class, bring your pastor, bring your congregation. The more the merrier. Please bring this because you're the ones that will grow this. May the next year we celebrate the, the end of the scourge on humanity. Until then, we march. Your Excellency. Good afternoon, everybody. Great to see so many people. This time of year, every year, I feel sadness and hope. Sadness because we're commemorating Roe v. Wade, um, but also hope for many reasons. And one of the hopes, one of the reasons for hope is looking out and seeing all of you, and especially so many young people who we now call the pro-life generation. So thank you to, especially to all of the young people, young adults who are here, but people of every age. In that light, before I pray, uh, every year we go to the March for Life in Washington, and um, as a side, and, and that's so filled with young people, and right here from our diocese, just from our Catholic high schools and Catholic universities, not to, we have over a thousand young people going to Washington this week. So, that, that brings so much joy to my heart, and I'm sure there are many others from um, other churches and denominations, so thank you. So let us pray. Lord God, our Father, we praise and thank you for the gift of life. You are our creator, the author of life. We thank you for the sublime dignity you have bestowed upon us by creating us in your image and likeness. We recognize with gratitude that your glory shines on the face of every human being. We implore your forgiveness, Lord, for our sins against the dignity of human life. In remembering Roe v. Wade, 
we implore your mercy upon our nation. For rejecting your commandment, thou shalt not kill. We ask your forgiveness for disobeying your commandment to love our neighbor as ourselves, especially the defenseless children in their mother's wombs. Bless us as we march for life today, as we bear public witness to the sacredness of human life from the moment of conception to the moment of natural death. Give us courage to defend and promote life, to fight against abortion, and bless us with love and compassion to assist women tempted by their circumstances to have an abortion. Help us to help them to choose life. Protect these mothers from the spiritual harm of abortion. Lord, help our fellow citizens and all people to recognize the evil of abortion. Help our nation to see that attacking life at its first stages is an aggression against society itself. Guide our government leaders to be true servants of the common good, the foundation of which is the right to life. Lord, may our march today, by your grace, contribute to building a culture of life and love in our community, where human life is welcomed, loved, and respected at every stage as your beautiful gift. We ask this through Christ our Lord. God.